All right, now let's do a little thing on the uh, trunk muscles. We'll start first with the uh, back. And if you look at the back of this little mini me model here, you're going to see that you have a kind of a diamond shaped muscle right there. Um, if you think of the name of it is the trapezius, think of trapezoid, four sided uh, shape. Anyway, the trapezius is split into two, so you have a right and left trapezius. But what happens is you've got fibers that are running both this way and this way, so that's kind of a unique muscle. So you have to think about what's going to happen. If these fibers shorten, you can see it um, on my back, if, if, if those shorten, they're going to pull up and that's going to help you shrug your shoulders. If these fibers right here shorten, that's going to take your scapula, these bones that are sticking out like that, and that's going to adduct, <laughs> I got to stop and think, adduct or bring them closer together. So it's going to adduct your scapula or help you shrug your shoulders, depending on which, um, how those fibers are contracting. So remember, when you're studying these muscles, always look for the grain of the fiber, and that'll kind of tell you the action of the muscle. All right, then you also have this big muscle in the back that comes all the way down through here. It's attached all the way down there to this uh, mid-sagittal section here, and then it comes up, and it goes up under your armpit and actually attaches to your humerus up under your arm. So think about that. If my arm is elevated, or if this guy's like raised up like that, when those fibers contract, they're going to pull shorter, they're going to get shorter, so that's going to cause you to depress your arm. So if my latissimus dorsi is uh, contracting, it's going to pull down on that arm and cause you to depress your arm. So that's the latissimus dorsi. Um, and they don't, okay, that would be antagonistic to a muscle that we hadn't covered yet, which is the deltoid, which is that little delta-shaped muscle right here or triangular shaped muscle right there on the top of your arm. When those fibers that are running like this, when they contract, they're gonna shorten. Great. That's gonna cause you to raise your arm. So that's gonna be, the deltoid causes you to raise your arm. The latissimus dorsi, this muscle in the back that comes up and attaches under your arm, that's gonna cause you to depress your arm. So those would be antagonistic muscles. All right, then you have the pectoralis major. And let me see if I can get him back on. All right, that's, he's not gonna stay, so we're just gonna take him. We'll use this guy right here. All right, this is, pretend this is the, the body here. All right, pectoralis major are gonna be these big muscles that run across your chest. They've been removed on this side, so you can see the underlying muscles. But this is your pectoralis major. Um, look again at the grain of the fibers, and you'll notice that they're running this way. So when these contract, they're going to shorten and they're going to pull your shoulders in towards the front. And if you're doing, looking at the back of your body, what's that going to do to your scapula? It's going to pull them farther apart, which is going to be abducting your scapula. So it's going to either rotate your shoulders in and kind of downward, or it's going to abduct your scapula. Two different things. All right. Um, the pectoralis major is antagonistic then to the trapezius because the trapezius was doing just the opposite. It was adducting your shoulders, I mean adducting your scapula, whereas the pectoralis major, when it contracts, it's going to pull in, so that's going to be abducting or taking your shoulder blade or your uh, scapula further away from the midline. So those are antagonistic muscles. Now, if you remove the pectoralis major, this is what you're going to see underneath it. You have these muscles that come down in little strings like this that are attached to each of your ribs. Those are the pectoralis minor muscles. Um, these are going to be um, very important when you're breathing and inhaling. Um, they'll actually, when they contract, they'll shorten up and they'll kind of raise the thoracic cavity and pull it open up, kind of pull the ribs up. So they're going to be synergistic with another group of muscles that help us to breathe. So when you're inhaling, you're going to need the pectoralis minor muscles to help you raise those ribs and kind of pull them up and open up that thoracic cavity. Then you have these muscles in between the costal cartilages of the ribs. These are called intercostal muscles. And when they contract, when you, when you breathe, they're going to kind of pull in and kind of contract as well. And then you also have the diaphragm. The diaphragm is this kind of dome-shaped muscle that separates out the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. Um, 
you can see it a little better in some of the other models, but it's basically, it's a dome-shaped model like that. So when you breathe, see if you can put this on the board here. Um, if there's your body right there, your diaphragm normally is dome-shaped like that when it's in a resting, relaxed position. But when it contracts, it's going to shorten and flatten out, and so that's going to open up that thoracic cavity and actually force air down into your lungs. So you've got several synergistic muscles when it comes to breathing. You've got the diaphragm that's going to flatten out when it contracts. You've got the intercostal muscles in between the ribs. They're going to uh, help pull those ribs up. You've got the pectoralis minor muscles that are going to pull that thoracic cavity up. Seems like there's one more with breathing. Oh, your rectus abdominis. We'll come back to those. Um, and then your sternocleidomastoideus. Remember for that deep inhalation, that really deep one, that's going to kind of help pull up everything and help you with inhalation. So there's a lot of synergistic muscles involved with inhalation. All right. Um, the only other muscle that, oh, well, we got two here. You've got on the sides here, you've got this kind of, it looks like a serrated knife. At least that's what the crackhead anatomist that named it thought it looked like. Um, but it's just kind of uh, braided looking right there. These are your serratus anterior muscles. So they come around like this and they're going in this direction. So that's the way the fibers are going. So when these contract, they're going to do, they're gonna pull everything in. And again, they're going to um, abduct your scapula. They're gonna pull them farther apart. So when they do like that, because the muscles are coming around like that, so that's gonna abduct your scapula and pull them kind of towards the front. Um, that's going to be antagonistic to the trapezius muscle, again, because remember the tra trapezius muscle, when it contracts, it's going to pull things in or adduct, bring them closer to the midline. So that's an antagonistic muscle there. Um, but anyway, I, I never did say it. the serratus anterior is the name of the muscle, and it looks like a serrated knife. My brain is not working today. All right, so that's these muscles right here, these kind of braided look looking ones. Um, let me see if you can see them on this one. Not very good. Okay, so just know them right there. And then finally, you have the rectus abdominis. Rectus means straight abdomen. So these are these straight muscles on the abdomen. Those are also known as your six pack. Um, some of us have those well developed and some of us don't. Um, but basically, they are connected by this linea alba, that white line of connective tissue here. And then you also have some other uh, connective tissue here that kind of segments them out. And so that can help, you know, change the positions of how much you're bending. So when these straight muscles that are running up and down like that, when they shorten, it's just going to pull you forward like this. So if you want to develop these muscles, you're going to do like crunches and sit there and sit ups and stuff like that, because that's the muscles that you're going to be using to do that. These are also synergistic with the diaphragm when inhaling. You can put your hand on your um, rectus abdominis muscles and when you take a deep inhalation, you can actually feel it in your abdominal area there in front of these rectus abdominis muscles. So they're synergistic with the diaphragm um, and then they're going to cause this kind of crunching action or put forward motion where your body just kind of, your trunk folds over. And then on the uh, layers of the abdominal wall, you've got three actual layers that cover this abdominal wall underneath the rectus abdominis and kind of to the side. Um, the first layer you have is called the external oblique. Those muscles are at an oblique angle, obviously that's why they named it, and they're on the outside, so that's the external oblique. These muscles are going to go downward, kind of towards your belly button or towards your uh, genital region here, so they're going to kind of have this downward motion. Um, and then you have the internal oblique that are underneath this, so this side's kind of been peeled away. So you have the internal oblique, and they actually point upward towards your sternum. So they're going to be going at an oblique angle, kind of towards your sternum or going up. And then on the very inside, you're going to have a layer of muscles that are going um, transversely, and they're known as the transversus abdominis or the transversalis muscle. Now all of these muscles are going to be involved in twisting and turning and rotating your trunk. So it depends on which one's the prime mover as to ex exactly how you're going to be twisting and bending. But all of these, the external oblique, the internal oblique, and the um, transversalis or transversus abdominis are all going to be involved in 
causing you to twist and turn your trunk. So that's the action of those. Then you have a uh, deep um, muscle here. Let me see if we can just turn it around this way. Um, okay, right here in the floor of your pelvic cavity, you've got this muscle that's known as the levator ani. It just forms the floor of your pelvic cavity right here. Uh, that's an important muscle for just, just kind of holding things together. When uh, people get older, that muscle starts getting weaker. If you've had babies, that muscle starts getting weaker. Um, so it's important to do that. People have heard of the Kegel exercises where you sit there and just visit or just forcefully contract that. That kind of helps um, strengthen that muscle. So um, women, especially when they start getting older and they've had a lot of babies real quickly, that muscle will weaken and they'll do something like they'll sneeze and they'll pee on themselves. So you do the Kegel exercises and just contract that and hold it and kind of strengthen that muscle in your pelvic floor. So that's the levator ani. And I think that's it for all the trunk muscles.